Having UC can take a toll on our nutritional balance. There's a lot of rumors about what could cause a flare-up and what's safe to eat. It's important to meet with a nutritionist to see what foods are good for you. And greens are also very important. What vegetables do you use on your sandwich? Pickles. <laughs> For good nutrition in ulcerative colitis, we generally give them some guidelines at the time of diagnosis. If you're having problems with growth, if you're having problems with poor weight gain, if you're having continued problems with uh, diarrhea, then we would suggest that they speak with the dietitian. As you probably know I'm the dietitian with the team. And my role is to help you with understanding any nutritional needs or have My goal is to work with a family to identify growth patterns and nutrition adequacy of their diet because it definitely is an indicator of the health of the child. Mm -hmm. Like I know I love apples, but they have skins and they have seeds. Right. And I don't usually eat the seeds anyway, but the skins, they said, could irritate my colon. It's important that the children don't leave out foods in food groups for fear of intolerance, that we can guide them through that process and help them identify those foods and assure that there are other foods that replace those that they feel they're intolerant to. So there is no special diet for UC, but it is true that some people tolerate certain foods better than others. What you're describing is a difference in the type of fiber. So let's take a peek at that. So some of the examples of the kinds of fiber, the soluble fiber would be inside the food, meaning the meat of the apple. Right. The insoluble fiber is the outside of the apple or the skin. Banana flakes, the pectin, the pulp of the fruit is all going to help if you have diarrhea. Whereas the insoluble fiber, like the bran and the seeds and those sorts of things, if you're having a flare-up, might be something that you would back off on. It's thought that this kind of causes a, almost a sandpaper effect inside the GI tract. So for that reason, we are cautious with those. But it's important not to restrict more foods than you really need to. The starting point for any healthy diet is using the food pyramid or to use the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. And that basically defines the numbers of servings from each of the major food groups that's required to meet nutritional needs. We then begin to individualize what the choices are within the food groups based on symptoms. Are there any foods that would do the same job as a, um, uh, an herbal supplement? We always recommend trying to get our nutrition, or most of it, from the foods that you eat with less reliance on added supplements. Because in the real world, nutrients are balanced in the food that we eat. And when we start going out and buying a supplement for this and a supplement for that, you run the risk of getting it out of the proper ratio. Now, I'm not saying you... I Googled diet and IBD, and I got such a wide variety of recommendations. Oh, yes. We will support a family if they truly want to try some of these alternative diets, but we would like them to meet with us and to make sure that when they're following this diet that they will become uh, calcium deficient or vitamin D deficient and that all the nutrients are in place. Well, we have parameters that we look for with percentage weight loss and we keep an eye on that and if you begin to lose weight too quickly we look at ideal body weight. My goal is to be able to support their nutritional needs while they're undergoing the different therapies to assure adequate health. Very nice meeting you today. It seems as though you're doing very well. Um, here's my contact information. Thank you. Uh, you can email me or give me a phone call. Okay? Thank you very much. That's nice to meet you. Take Bye. care. Nice to meet you. Nice too. to meet you.